Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. All sources linked up on our Facebook page and at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. In the News is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom, real life stories of raising a child with diabetes, winner of the American Book Fest Prize for Best New Nonfiction, available in paperback on Kindle or as an audiobook, all at amazon.com. Our top story this week, you know insulin helps to regulate blood glucose. Now scientists have discovered a second molecule in the body that seems to do the same thing. It's produced by fat tissue, but uses a different molecular pathway. So it's hoped that this could get around insulin resistance. These scientists say the hormone called FGF1 suppresses breakdown of fat cells into free fatty acids and regulates the production of glucose in the liver. Because it does this in a very different way from insulin, they're calling it a second loop. Very early here, but very intriguing. A new study out of Stanford says setting children and teens up with the CGM shortly after a T1D diagnosis results in a lower A1C a year later. They looked at kids diagnosed in 2018 to 2020 and then compared that group to other children diagnosed corresponding four years earlier. In that first group, about 90% started CGM in that first month. In the second group, it was under 2% that started that early. At diagnosis, the kids in the newer cohort actually had higher A1Cs. At six months and 12 months after diagnosis, those kids had significantly lower A1Cs than the other kids. These researchers say the news is more evidence to get insurers to cover the devices. A new risk factor for type 2 mostly affects women, and it's in about 10% of the population. A new study says about 1 in 10 adults has a lump on their adrenal glands that, although otherwise harmless, increases production of certain hormones that then increase the risk for type 2 and high blood pressure. About 70% of those with them were women, most of whom were 50 years old or older. This is called mild autonomous cortisol secretion, and these researchers say we should start screening for it. After almost 50 years of honoring people with diabetes with anniversary medals, Lilly Diabetes is phasing out the Journey Awards. These awards were given to patients for 10, 25, 50, and 75 years with diabetes. A Lilly spokesperson confirmed the news to me saying, quote, we periodically need to reassess and prioritize programs as the environment and our business shifts. We believe our decision will allow us to focus on programs that we hope bring the most value to people living with diabetes. And they encourage people to check out the Jocelyn Medalist program instead, and I will link that up. Movement on a couple of court cases involving insulin makers. Sanofi lost its appeals court bid to revive patents on Lantus. You'll recall that last year, Viatris got approval for Semgly, its long-acting insulin, which is basically the same thing and is approved for the same indications as Lantus. Sanofi is facing an antitrust lawsuit accusing it of obtaining some 20 patents in an effort to delay competition. Viatris has been knocking out those patents one by one in court. A federal judge has pared down a class action lawsuit accusing the biggest insulin makers of racketeering. Novo Nordisk, Sanofi, and Eli Lilly are accused of scheming together to inflate prices. The U.S. District Judge ruled the claims under the racketeering laws of several states, except for Arizona's, must be dismissed because the laws do not allow claims by plaintiffs who bought the drugs through intermediaries, such as insurance companies, rather than from the drug makers directly. That same judge did allow these RICO claims to proceed earlier this year in a separate class action against the companies bought by direct purchases. You look at CGM accuracy in hospitals, mostly for people with type 2. This study looked at the Dexcom G6, didn't measure how it influenced care, just whether the readings were accurate compared to finger sticks. As you'd imagine, the readings were less accurate, the extreme highs and lows, but the researchers concluded CGM tech is a reliable tool for hospital use. The FDA allowed expanded Dexcom use in hospitals less than two years ago, so this is all still very new. And Dexcom has partnered with another new company. This one is called Snack. Snack, S-N-A-Q, is a diabetes app that is designed to track both your diet and your blood glucose and can give you nutritional information just by taking a photo of your food with your smartphone. Good write-up and review on that from Diabetes Daily, which I will link up. Apparently, it works pretty well. The partnership means all U.S.-based snack users can automatically view Dexcom data together with their meals inside the snack app. And a tip of a hat to our friend Nerdabetic, who spotted this ridiculous story. LG Electronics introduced a new 
in-vehicle infotainment concept tailored to autonomous vehicles, like self-driving cars, right? So this is one of the photos that they shared. It's designed to blur the distinction between home and car. This is a car cabin that can turn into a space where passengers work, watch TV, exercise, or experience camping virtually. The name? LG Vision Omnipod. It was presented at the Consumer Electronics Show this week. No comment yet from Insulate, the makers of the Omnipod with which most of us are already familiar. Before I let you go, a reminder that the podcast this week is all about diabetes in media, a really deep dive into how representation on screen influences those watching. Listen wherever you get your podcasts, or if you're listening to this on a podcast app, just go back one episode. Next week's episode, timing a little different. We're going to release it either very late Tuesday evening or early Wednesday morning. I am set to talk to the CEO of Dexcom on Tuesday. I want to get that to you as soon as I can rather than hold it. So thank you for your patience on that. As you know, podcast episodes with these long format interviews generally go live about 4 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday mornings. So this one will be a little bit delayed. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.